Welcome to All Home Care Matters, the show where we discuss all things home care with discussions on important age-related matters and topics. Brought to you by Enriched Life Home Care Services, the number one rated home care provider in Michigan by top rated local. Hello, and welcome back to All Home Care Matters. If this is your first time visiting us here at the show, we want to say thank you for taking time out to be with us today. We appreciate how valuable everyone's time is, and that's why we try and make each episode here at All Home Care Matters something that will hopefully matter to you. Today, we are honored to welcome back the remarkable gentleman from Fotavia, along with their partner, Lori Snow of Spiral 100. Welcome. Welcome back to the team from Fotavia. And... Gentlemen and ladies, it's great to have you back. I want to take a minute, and for our viewers and listeners who may not be familiar, have you take a moment to introduce yourselves. Joe, I'll start with you. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks again for having us back, Lance. It's our amazing. pleasure. Uh, my name is Joe Hausch. I'm president, CEO, and chief creative officer of uh, Fotavia, a company that started in about 2014, 15, and uh, proud to be on the show again. Our pleasure. John? Hi, I'm John Wright, uh, Santa's Lifestyle Solutions. I also have uh, worked with Joe, Roger, and Lori uh, for quite some time, uh, providing unique uh, cognitive and engagement uh, enhancement tools and experiences for seniors across the continuum to enrich the lifestyle that they are currently leading their lives with. Wonderful. Uh, we'll go with Lori. Um, good morning. Uh, thanks for for having us on. I am Lori Snow. I have uh, I'm the uh, VP of Strategy for a company called Spiro 100, and we do fitness uh, and exercise and fall prevention uh, videos for uh, seniors living at home, aging in place, or in a senior living community. Um, I am also a partner of the bundle package with. Potavia and others that we'll talk about at the end, but been in this industry for 17 years and have seen technology moving into the senior living space um, at a snail's pace until COVID. And now we're, uh, we're seeing a boom. So we're excited to talk about that with you today. We're excited to learn about it. Thank you for being with us. Roger. Lance, <clears throat> as you remember, the last time we did this, I went into why a lawyer who burned out can become a neuroscience teacher at the college level in the gerontology department. And after 11 years, I wanted to go into the research itself for companies just like Quotavia. And when I saw what they were doing with Quotavia and then learned what Lori and her team are doing with the engagement bundle, I know I'm in the right place. So put me down as a researcher who has found material for older adults that's ready to be tested in prime time. We're glad to have you here, Roger. Joe, I wanna just start with you and why don't you take some time and explain to our viewers and listeners what exactly Fotavia is? Well, I like that question, that's uh, that's a good one. And actually, I'm gonna start with, I have a challenge for, for all the viewers today, since some of you already may know what Fotavia is, but I think, you know, since we're, this is just a new year and I'm I'm actually enjoying a new hip. And I'll tell you why that's important, because I've been waiting 15 years or I've been dealing with pain and a lot of other things for the past 15 years. And some people even around us in this meeting right here convinced me that it would be the best thing to do. And I'll tell you, it's four weeks to the day. I'm just coming out of surgery four weeks ago, and it's pretty amazing. I feel about 20 years younger. I could get up and dance for you now, but I don't want to embarrass all of us. Uh, I mean, me, and uh, uh, it, it, it's neat. So I think my challenge to everybody who's listening today or maybe who listens to your show is to look at things a little bit differently this year and maybe take take an opportunity to do something different that you didn't want to do, you didn't think you had time to do, you were challenged by, because I think the rewards are incredible. That That's said... Right. That said, I'll go back 2014. I met a, the founder of Otavia. His name is Bill Appleby, and he used to have a gallery here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where I am. And um, <clears throat> he used to feature images from the Life Picture Collection. 
and he uh, he had incredible images. He would sell them for between five and forty thousand dollars, from pictures of Frank Lloyd Wright or fo great photographs of him to the Beatles on the cover of Life magazine. So uh, great stuff. Well, in his downtime, he would have in school groups or um, senior living communities would come in and they would just enjoy the art. And then, you know, just looking at art is one thing, but kind of the experiences are different. And one day he, uh, when I first met him, he told me about a story and this is kind of, now it goes, now it triggers me to go back to about 1989 and something that happened to me then. I'll continue with Bill's story, but he was talking about a gallery night when a bunch of folks were sitting around a, a, a photograph and there was a commotion. He went running into this other room. What's going on? The coordinator was sitting there and she said, everything's fine, Bill. And he looked and there was this woman that had been in her wheelchair. She was looking at a photograph of the Statue of Liberty um, from about 1954, I think. And um, there was a group around them, and she was talking to them. And he's like, mm, what's up? And apparently she was talking about being there then. In the 50s, she got married. She spent the week there with her husband. They went to all these great restaurants and hotels and then saw these great sites. And he's like, okay, what's going on? And she said, Bill, Bill, you don't understand. Mary hasn't spoken in two years. Okay, so let's jump back in time now. So the 80s. So Joe's had this kind of in the back of his mind since the 80s. I was involved with an organization here called Art Reach Milwaukee, and our goal was to make the arts accessible to people. We did programs. We sent artists to senior communities to do art projects, to do drum circles, to do poetry. I think I even did some poetry or some uh, design with poetry things uh, a couple times. So we were we were exploring a lot of different things. And we had one program that was awesome where an artist would go out with an old suitcase, go to a community, sit in a group, open up the suitcase, and it, we called it the time capsule. So it had old photos of Model Ts or Model As, skeleton keys, telephones, and other stuff. And one day I, uh, in 1988, I think it was, I'm in a meeting and somebody tells me, Joe, I got to tell you the story about the time capsule. And I'm like, oh, good. This is awesome. And she said, we had a really good experience, blah, blah, blah. And anyway, apparently this woman, say her name was Mary. She, she found this doily that was in the suitcase and she pulled out the doily and she started talking about her grandmother. My grandmother had this doily and she had it at her house and it was sitting in the front lobby in the cubby and there was a light on it, but you couldn't touch that. Don't, oh, don't even think about it. And well, okay, I'm listening. That's cool. She goes, and Mary went on to talk about, but at Thanksgiving, the doily came off of there and it went onto the table and the turkey went on there. And I'm like, oh, this is awesome. I love it. And she goes, Joe, wait, you don't get it. I'm like, what? That's a great story. She goes, Joe, Mary hadn't spoken in two months. So here's Joe in 1988. And I get this little thing and, oh. What does this mean? I talked to our executive director. We need to get this on film, video, ah, something. We gotta, we we gotta get some funding. And Joe, Joe, there's no funding for this. It's called art therapy, and it's very difficult to get that. So, I've been involved with, I guess, art therapy or the pursuit of getting content or or delivering something. It's turned into my life mission, I guess. So when I heard Bill's story. I got goosebumps and I said, Bill, I know exactly what you're talking about. It's art therapy. Right. And I get it. And I think maybe the life picture collection could trigger and do the same kind of stuff. So in 2015, we formed a company. Um, my background is branding and advertising and marketing and that stuff. So I'm an artist, a musician, and I get all that stuff. And he was looking for somebody to help build the brand to uh, develop the website, to, um, help create the actual format of our V-clips. That's our two-minute videos. That's what we call them. And um, I kind of fit the bill. So we started working on some things. He had stuff developed. He had started on the concept probably in around 2005 or six, And it's really morphed a lot since then. Originally, it was going to be stories about artists. It's So it's about art 
It's about art therapy. It's about appreciating art, looking at art. Photographs are art. And, and these iconic images that we focus on from the Life Picture Collection are, uh, what, Americana? It's things that we're all familiar with. So it's like we all grew up with this stuff. Yeah. So anybody now living in the senior living world, I mean, they remember this stuff. Our first movie was VJ Day in Times Square. VJ Day in Times Square. Alfred Eisenstadt, New York, New York, 1945. This photograph portrays an American sailor kissing a nurse in Times Square in New York City, celebrating the end of World War II. Eisenstadt was photographing rapidly changing events during the celebrations, so he did not have an opportunity to get the names of the people or the details. The photograph does not clearly show the face of either person involved. Soon afterward, throngs of people crowded into Times Square, and it became a sea of humanity. This photograph is considered one of the most iconic photojournalism images worldwide. Never boss people around. It's more important to click with people than to click the shutter. Alfred Eisenstadt. So the nurse is kissing the sailor, right? We show that at some of our Showtime events, and we've had people, they know exactly where they were when, that, when they saw that, and it's just amazing. So the stories that are created, the reminisce with relevance, which John invented that term, and I love it. So reminisce with relevance is what we do, and um, um, that's probably long enough intro for okay. me. Okay. Well, it's good to see you, Joe. Uh, you. So would you say 2015 is when you started with Fotavia, when it was formed then? or Yes, exactly. But it goes back much further than that, right? I think the original concept, and again, like I said, I'm, or I'm starting to admit it, that it's been my whole career has almost ended up, you know, I'm, I'm not, uh, I don't plan on going away anytime soon, but my career, it's kind of, it's come full circle. When I ran into him, I guess it was, you know, a blessing. And um, I started a number of other companies. I've developed products. I've had NFL quarterbacks as clients. So, I mean, I've done a lot of different stuff. But this all of a sudden has become a, it's way more than a hobby. Let's put it that way. So when I met him, I really didn't. I thought I was just going to help. I thought there was going to be a few investors. I thought we'd make some movies and it would be brilliant. We'd change the world and whatever. Well, I'm in. I'm all in. And uh, I've been, uh, yeah, I guess running it now uh, for nine years, I guess, or coming up on that. And uh, amazing group. And I have so much talent. Somebody told me this week that I was the most creative person they ever met. Well, I'll tell you what, it all has to do with these people that are, I've been surrounding myself with. I've been lucky and blessed and to meet people like that are going to be in this meeting and yourself that are just that put up with my craziness and, and support me. And it's, it's just wonderful. I'm so excited to, I want to sit back the rest of this show and listen to them because they right. blow me away every day. Well, I, I will just say before we move on to John and Roger, what, what really drew myself to you, Joe, not only your creativity, but your style and hair. <laughs> <laughs> I have to agree. I wouldn't and I wondered if you were gonna get some new glasses for this year so that we could Thankfully I haven't needed glasses yet. So I don't want to say that too loud. Okay. Um, John, let's go over to you. So you're yeah. with Fotavia as well, and you know, you guys uh, 
or have been a team for quite some time, but what exactly is your role and position with Fotavia? Yeah, and I'll, I'll jump into that and let me tell you a little bit about how I uh, met Joe and actually got introduced to Fotavia. Yeah. So uh, I met Joe about five years ago. We were at an event and, um, you know, he started talking to me about Fotavia just like he did right now. And, and right away I got it. So I've been in healthcare, senior living on all sides of the continuum for about 23 years now. So I've seen it. And when he was talking about it, instantly a million things started going through my mind on how this can be applicable in many different ways. So I, I've helped out with, uh, you know, the business development, the sales aspect of it, and just bringing awareness to what Fotavia can do, how it can be done, and the impact that will be made um, in the senior living space. So, and, and one of the biggest things, as Joe mentioned, um, is everything that we do revolves around allowing people to reminisce with relevance. And what I mean by that is, whether you're in an individual or a group setting, it, everybody's on their own cognitive journey. And what Fotavia has the ability to do is to reach out and find what's impactful to that individual and then pull them in from there because those memories are still there. They still exist. So how can we engage? And it's all about engagement. How can we engage in an impactful, meaningful way that actually resonates with the person we're talking to? Because now we can create a baseline for who this individual is. Now we can uh, create a care plan around that. But now we also can uh, figure out a way to help stimulate, ease the mind and, you know, bring peace to an environment where, as Joe had mentioned, this person hadn't talked for a couple of years. Those memories are still there. Fotavia finds those memories and gives us the opportunity to bridge that gap. And speaking of bridging that gap, one unique thing that we found as well is in our industry, there are a lot of caregivers who are younger than the individuals they're providing care for. So you may have a 20, you know, mid 20 year old caregiver and a resident they're providing care for 70s or 80s. They may both love baseball, but there's a 50 year generational gap there. So what Fotavia does is it helps bridge that generational gap. It brings commonality and focus to a point of interest for both parties that now they can talk about, they can bond about, they can actually strengthen the human connection, if you will, which is so important in what, in what we do. It always has been, but if COVID's taught us anything, that it's much more important than, you know, we ever really gave it credit for, even though we did focus on that quite a bit in the past. And something that Joe mentioned before, it's like, you know, there's some really great ideas out there. And, uh, you know, one of the things that um, we talk about these six dimensions of health and wellness, and I'm going to let Lori talk a little bit about that, too, after Roger. But we've got these great products that really help across the board with seniors. And it's like, how do we deliver these? How do we make sure that they're getting these uh, these products in a way that's meaningful, impactful for the communities, the staff, the residents? You know, how do we make that work? So the partnership with this bundle of products um, and they are, you know, we, within this bundle, we've got award-winning clinically tested products that are actually phenomenal across the board, no matter what you're trying to do in these different dimensions of wellness. And I'll let Lori talk a little bit about the bundle on that aspect. But when I talk about reminisce with relevance and why that's important, I'm going to go ahead and uh, kick it over to, to Roger here and let him talk about a little bit of the uh, the science behind what makes Fotavia so special. Though. Roger. Perfect. John hits on engagement. And what I found out 20 years ago during the clinical trial on what I had invented, which was memorobics, I didn't know the science, but now I do. And in 20 years, science has caught up to what Joe saw way back when. And the best two words are a documentary that was a dynamite game changer called Alive Inside. Mm -hmm. So many people have seen Henry on that six minute video gold mine that told us when Joe and then Bill saw someone come alive for that moment. And John pulls in the benefit of a caregiver who has been working, working, working. When they can be a part of using a tool as elegant as Potavia and a few others that I've discovered since retiring from teaching, the science isn't there. But what I like to say, it's not there because we've never tested it before. How do you know it doesn't have something that no pill has ever done? No pill, Lance, is even on the horizon that can do what these types of tools, I call them sustainable cognitive interventions disguised as tools 
or activities that if they were tested, we would have something that actually is a chemical. And in my TED talk, I called it a neuro squirt and pops out in your brain. When you see that picture of Jackie Robinson, uh, a baseball player that might not resonate with Betty and, and Don, but the baseball fan who remembers that their brains come alive. Science isn't there yet, but we're on the edge of it with what's the NIH is funding with the Neuro Arts Blueprint Project. Renee Fleming is probably going to be looked at 100 years from now as a wonderful opera singer, but I think she will be recognized as one of the brain science pioneers with her effort to get what Lori's been doing for years, what Joe invented and didn't know when I met him. He has a cognitive gold mine that needs to be spread out. And what we're doing now is we're working on some grants, not to try to get a quick grant to make money to help some company develop, but to actually prove once and for all that objective findings show that not only do these six dimensions in the bundle or Joe with Fotavia, not only do they come alive in my brain when I resonate, but if we can stretch that to sustain it, it's like a an expression that I called a neural squirt turning into a neuro gush that's a two-dimensional benefiting the caregiver and the care receiver because the bridge uh, that, uh, that was just talked about when John said it's a bridge, generational, we think that the science will show the caregiver's brain also gets those neural squirts sure. of joy and, and can leave behind some stress for a few minutes or a few moments. And then that person, next time they're exposed to something else, the Grand Canyon or the Empire State Building, they will remember and we will have what I've called for 20 years, memory mining. So my goal is to verify these tools, put these pickaxes in the hands of caregivers and let them mine those stored memories. And once you mine it and get the dust blown off <clears throat> to those gold mines and talk about baseball or talk about quilting, that's where we're going with this. That's wonderful. <clears throat> I want to uh, circle back really quickly, and I would open this up to any of you that would like to answer it. Tell us about the Moment in Time series and what, what exactly that is. I guess I'll go. Uh, the Moment in Time is, is featuring, um, we, we signed an incredible deal with the Life Picture Collection about seven years ago. And uh, we have access to over 660,000 images. So you remember, or we all remember Life Magazine, if it was sitting on our parents' or our grandparents' table. It was a large <clears throat> magazine. The pictures were dominant. Well, all those pictures seemed so familiar, and we all grew up with them. And um, so we decided that those are the best best things to tell stories about. And there are backstories behind all of them. Um, yeah. So... Uh, we developed that series, A Moment in Time, and each uh, each one of our films is a mini, I call them macro documentaries, actually. They're only, they're two minutes long, and that's the perfect length. We introduced the the story with the title of the piece, the photographer, yeah, where it was shot, and the date, if we know that. So we're treating it like it's in a museum. Then because we have a voiceover, and large white type on screen, as you can kind of see behind me here, um, we tell we we tell the story of what's going on in the image. So if you're sight impaired, if you're hearing impaired, you're still getting something out of it. And I've got stories about that from the first time we showed it. People that we thought were sleeping during the show, all of a sudden commented later on because they were because they had had a voiceover to go along with it. Yeah. So anyway. So we describe what's going on in the image, and then we do kind of a fly through of the image. And what I mean by that, Lance, is it's, I mean, these things are 6,000 DPI. They're very high res scans. So you can see the grain of film. You can see the scratches. You can see things the photographer never even saw. Sure. So then we go on and tell a story about what maybe was going on. If it's a person like Amelia Earhart behind me. We might tell what was going on in her life and what her accomplishments. If it's about um, the Empire State Building, we might talk about how many bricks are in it or how many elevators or things like that. Just facts, 
factoids that uh, that get people excited, I guess, or that make them go, oh, uh-huh. Or I didn't know that. All those things. It's those surprises. And I know Roger loves to talk about that. So then we'll finish up with a, another little uh, detail of the image. And we usually end on a, a, a quote. So it's either a quote from uh, maybe the person in the, in the image. Or if it's, again, a building or something like that, it might be uh, from the photographer. So in the case of VJ Day, uh, Alfred Eisenstadt was the photographer and he shot like that, the time, uh, the Times Square piece with the nurse and the sailor 30 times. So what he said, what he said is sometimes it's better to click with people that rather than to click with the shutter. And, uh, so it might be a, a quote like that, that makes you think or yeah. is uplifting it's or, or make you laugh. So we try and leave on a note like that. And that's two minutes and it's, uh, that's the magic. So yeah. that's, uh, that's a, a moment in time. And since then, we've developed something from there that's kind of important that we call faux trivia. So what we've done is we've added a component at the end, a video component that asks two questions about what you just learned. Again, maybe it's about the Statue of Liberty. You might have learned there's like 365 steps to get up to the crown of it or that they're only 19 and a half inches wide. But then we ask two questions, which John likes to talk about. Why don't I let John talk about those? Life. Sure. Well, you know what we found? I mean, so we understand that the demographic in senior living is constantly shifting. So you'll see some of the in images that are popping up on Joe's screen from the 30s, but we do the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. And I believe we've even curated some content up into the 2000s at this point. Yeah. But what Fotrivia really did, we, we knew that Fotavia was uh, allowing a canvas for people to interact, okay, and to talk about, I remember that, that really resonates with me. So we said, okay, let's take it a step further and find out why it does that and what it means to these individuals on a very personal level. So with Fotrivia, which is also two minute segment, it's all two minute by design, the first two are what you just saw. The second two questions are the life. These are by far and away my favorite because um, we, we did a Beatles one the time they were on Ed Sullivan's show. And, you know, they asked a couple of questions about that. And then they would say, what is your favorite Beatles song? We had 20 minute conversations from people talking about their favorite Beatles song, who they used to listen to it with. Some would start singing a little bit. I mean, these are the moments where the magic really happens. I mean, you talk about getting to know somebody on a very interpersonal level. This is where it happens. And these are where true connections are made. And that's where empathy can really be felt throughout. This is an incredible tool for allowing people to connect on so many different levels. That's why the full trivia has become such a huge part of what we do, because it not only helps caregivers establish a baseline, it allows um, the residents themselves to give you a snapshot into their life and who they were. So it's a little bit about uh, full trivia. So is is that separate then from the V-clips? So it's they go hand in hand. So you can do just V-clips. But um, we found the most impact is usually um, aligned with full trivia. So you'll get that two minute V clip and then you get a two minute full trivia regarding the V clip. So the cool thing is you watch the engagements there. And but then the piece after that where the interaction, you know, comes is really, like I said, where the magic happens, because you learn just because they saw and recognize the picture, you have no idea why it's impactful right. or why that memory, you know, means something to them until you start getting them to and talk to talk about it. So mm -hmm. to, to get them to engage is wonderful, but to get them to interact off of what they've just engaged with is even better. So that's why it's been such a success for us. Now, I want to um, I'm, I'm assuming these all kind of intercorrelate with one another is this part of the cognitive enhancement tool or what exactly is that when I say cognitive enhancement tool? Well, I can tell you that what, what I saw when I first met Joe was V clips moment in time. That's a two dimensional picture that he extended to multi-domain exercises because your eyes see it, your ears, left brain reads it, the right brain seen, sees the image. And I, I saw the potential of seeing that as a research project that could confirm the value. It was the alive inside that a person doesn't have to talk, as John said, and come out. But what we then did was to extend it to 
a time element, not just two dimensions or three dimensions, but a fourth dimension. Think, Lance, of extending the benefits of remembering when you were a younger age and with people and saw the Beatles on TV. Once you've extended it for four minutes with trivia, and then, as John said, it's the magic of people whose brains, I think we can prove, brains have been moving. The dust is off that golden memory of something. And at the end of the trivia, their brains are exercised. They're warmed up, just like Joe's hip warmed up in recovery. <laughs> and they cannot hold it back. They want to share. The hands pop up. And I'm going to prove that it's not only in that 15, 16 minutes when the 10 minutes, 12 minutes of sharing that they want to share where they were and resonate and, and communicate. And that's engagement after COVID that we need desperately, a tool that can do this. But what I want to show is the ripple effect. I've been writing about this for 20 years, that when you get someone excited about their own life and they want to share it, <clears throat> They don't just stop when they go to their room in the community. They call up their daughter and say, guess what I saw? Or do you, do you remember this when we yeah. did this? And I think it's going to be resonating not just for a period of time within the, the day, but it'll be days later at yeah. the table that they'll come in and say, you should have been there. They really want to share. That's wonderful. I think Lance, you know, caregivers have been using us differently since we introduced us to them in, I think, 2017. The first time we showed uh, Fotavia, um, a person named Pat Durham um, kind of found us. And uh, she was activity professional of the year in the country in 2020, I believe. 2020, yep. Yeah, and... She told us, I mean, I kind of let her go. It was like, Pat, how are you going to use this? You know, and she kind of knew immediately. She saw that this would be perfect for reminisce. But she would tell us, I'd get a phone call or something. And she said, well, I, I use it one-on-one. -on -one. And I'm like, really? And she's British, so I have to use my accent. Uh -huh. And she'd say, oh, Joe, I, I you know, one-on-one, -on -one, it's amazing. If somebody's in a funk, and I'm like, a funk. she goes in a bad mood. She'll take them out of the group and she'll just go to our website and watch two V clips. So four minutes of content, they'll have a discussion. And she said, I can reduce their anxiety. I can get them refocused and I can get them to a point where I can reintroduce them to the group without giving them any medication. And that was to me, that was, Oh, you know, that was incredible. A holy grail moment. But then she'd say, Oh, I use it in group situations. Like it's oh, if it's Elvis's birthday, we'll get the picture of Elvis and maybe the Beatles or talk about other, uh, grab some V clips specifically and just watch them in a group and talk about them. And then sometimes they just sat and they would just let it run and just whatever content came up. We have eight different categories, so there's going to be something for somebody sooner or later. So she would just do that as well and just let it run. And then when we created for trivia based on our our toolkit that was supporting with these questions and whatnot. When we created for trivia, Pat said to me, Oh, Joe, I like this even better than the V clips, which was, which scared me, but I got it because now right. it, it, it helped build programs basically for caregivers. So they, they, they could relax. They had a program and they could just let it go and go with the flow. There's no training to this stuff. It's right. just, yeah. listen, is it only for the senior market or do you cater to other age groups and demographics? You, you want me to run with that, Joe? Go. <laughs> so mm -hmm. Fotavia truly is multi-generational, educational, G-rated content for anybody, anywhere from, as Joe mentioned, from five to 105. Um, so it can be used in an educational vertical as well. I mean, there's no really limit to the platform in which Fotavia can provide a benefit. Um, what we've found, and it's been very impactful in the senior living market, is because it creates those connections and responses and brings back those memories that reminisce with relevance. And um, one of the things that we found in our search to get it out there and make it more deliverable, deliverable we knew we had something amazing in this aspect to handle this dimension of wellness. And because we did, and we had this vision, 
we met other folks along the way who shared that same vision with you other great impactful products in different dimensions of it. And that's how we met Lori and some of the other partners in what we call the engagement bundle. And what the engagement bundle really is, is it wraps these six wonderful products together in a way that can be distributed through quilt. And I almost jumped on that when you put it out there, Roger, put it in your quilt. So I was, uh, um, but we talked about deliverable, right? It's like, how do we get it to the masses? And we partnered with a company called Quilt. And I'll let Lori uh, jump in a little bit on that as well. But also what Lori and uh, her team are doing with Sparrow 100, I mean, it's just, listen, the mind is a fantastic tool as well, but so is the body. I mean, mind, body, spirit, and soul, right? So we try and cover all of those in these six different dimensions of uh, health and wellness. And the activities that Sparrow provides are amazing. And right away when we met these other companies, we knew that we had something really special. So it's dubbed the engagement bundle, but it is for a reason. And it's because we, we hit all of the points that are out there. And early on, it was like, well, how do we get this to everybody? And we talked about deliverables. And then, you know, that partnership with Quilt made a ton of sense. And, uh, you know, with that, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll let all the guys kind of split the room here and let Lori jump in because she is an expert in her own right. And I am chomping at the bit to add <laughs> to this conversation. I, yeah. I don't think, yeah. Joe, you, you've ever heard me be so quiet for so long. <laughs> uh, true, true. True, true. So much to add. How much time do I have? How, yeah, six how minutes. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> you got about 20. Mm, okay. Yeah. That, that, ought to, that ought to do it. No. Um, so much to add. Um, but, yeah. First of all, I, I'll, I'll start with the, um, the beautiful art. Right, that that Joe is bringing into the community. It's just beautiful, beautiful art. And what you describe and what um, you were talking about, how people light up and they're talking and they haven't talked in a long time. I've seen, I saw that happen with dance also. I was taking dance lessons at Fred Astaire and a, a, an elderly woman brought in her husband and he was very feeble. He had Alzheimer's and they started dancing, what, doing the waltz. And I saw with my own eyes, he transformed. He stood straighter. He looked at her. He knew who she was. He danced. They had conversation. And then when it, when the dancing all stopped, he went back again. You know, that dance brought something out. So, you know, I know there's dance therapy too, but there are so many uh, ways to, uh, to reach people now. And the beauty of it that I've experienced being in senior living for a, you know, yeah. almost two decades, is that technology is now allowing us, is allowing staff to easily bring these things to the people they're caring for. How difficult was it, you know, even um, 15 years ago? How could they have possibly done this? They would have had to have pictures that they held up. They would have had to have music playing from somewhere else. To to even make some of this happen was was a real chore. And now, with what we're doing with the six tech, not the six different companies that we've put together in this bundle package, which I'll get into details, it can be on their phone. It can yep. be on their tablet. They can sit with somebody and immediately press a button and have the, the, the technology and the resources to touch someone very um, impactfully. And um, something that, uh, that um, Roger, you, you hit on is that, um, what's happening in the brain, right? Because when I talk to, when we talk to senior living communities that aren't used to using engagement through technology, right? They're like, well, I don't want to put people in front of a screen. I don't want them sitting in front of a screen. This is not passive watching. What, it, what, it, what happens when somebody is passively watching a movie where they just sit back, it, it sedates the brain waves. And I'm, I'm out of my area of expertise, but this is what I've heard in the past. But when you're working with the type of technologies that we're bringing forward, there's thinking, there's processing, there's, you know, there's a lot of things going on behind those eyeballs that um, it's actually firing and igniting the, 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 the person. So um, that, that was some of the comments I wanted to make on what you all were talking about a little previously. But the, the six companies, uh, and I have to I have to say this, Joe, because we had this conversation in depth yesterday morning. The six, um, there, there's a wellness wheel in senior living um, that contain the six dimensions of wellness, right? 
like you know, physical activity, spiritual connection, um, socialization, your environment, you know, all these, all these six, um, and, and Joe likes to call them pillars, which is, is fine, call them pillars. And they're represented in senior living as a, as a wheel, pie slices with each being of equal size, right? Um, company that I'm with, Spyro, we do physical fitness. And I like, I would like to say, get rid of that wheel of, of those six pillars of wellness. And they should be like Maslow's hierarchy of need with the bottom being one of physical well-being and the rest building on top. Not that anyone is more important, but you need to lay a foundation of well-being, right? To live a healthy, vibrant life. We all, we all want that. This is what this is all about, right? If you're going to be well, right? We, it's, it's, we want to stay socially connected. We want to hit on those memories. Um, we want the brain to be working the best it can. Um, and it starts with being well. Joe, your hip has made all the difference in the world. You can move around now without pain. Um, yeah. So what Spyro does is fitness. So we're all about keeping people moving. The body has to move. Uh, the body has to move even for the brain to think clearly, right? It, it all works together. So we've got to keep people physically moving. What happens a lot of times in senior living communities, and I've seen it, and hopefully it's becoming less and less people are plunked in front of a television, you know, and they're sitting and they're sitting and it's very, um, it's sad and it's very detrimental to their well being. Everything deteriorates. Um, um, when you're not active disease sets in, right? You can't digest your food. You don't sleep, right? You, your endorphins aren't released. So there's a lot of bad things that happen if we're not moving. So Spyro is all about getting fitness into the hands of residents uh, in senior living communities and at home, but easily push a button and you have whatever you want. You have yoga, Tai Chi, belly dancing, kickboxing. That's what we do. Um, then you have, you know, what Joe does for Tavia at the, at the press of a button there for residents to engage with. But we also have travel, live travel. Um, like a, a Zoom, like I, the travel agent is in Peru and she's walking around showing things and residents can ask her questions, bringing the outside world in. Um, that's a, that's a, a hitting the, the pillar or the dimension of wellness or environment. Um, we have um, Coro, we have spiritual content, the world's largest spiritual library um, is part of that bundle package to help people. Again, they're at the end of their life. Spirituality is very important. You're in a senior living community. Um, how often are they bringing somebody in? If it's not a faith-based community, how often are you getting that spiritual nourishment? There, they can have this, the music, the Bible study, the you know the sermons, whatever it is that they want to access right there on their um, iPad, their television, however that they want to access it. And then we have um, we have two other companies, uh, Life Bio, that also does reminiscence. It's more of a conversation starter with just still pictures. A very simple product, but very effectual uh, in memory care. So, did I hit everybody, guys? One day, uh, one day university. One day, yeah. Yeah, one day college lectures, uh, nice. a year or two out. You know, there for people for lifelong learning. So we've got these six companies. We all came together and um, it was actually uh, during COVID. People were, were, you know, in their rooms. They couldn't come out. Senior living was desperate to get some type of engagement uh, in, into folks. And so tech, all of a sudden technology um, was getting more and more acceptable. Zoom. Everybody suddenly understood how to work Zoom and right. do these um video conferencing yeah. so COVID was horrible it, I mean nobody would say anything different but it was good in that it forced senior living to embrace technology and how to use it to bring to the residents um, engagement that they uh, want and need and desire That's so just, Lori how did you guys uh, end up selecting the partners Oh, like I said, I've been, you know, I've, I've been to thousands of conferences, senior living conferences, you know, over the years. And I knew a lot of the other technology, uh, these other companies, um, and seeing them at conferences, you know, seeing 
hearing the stories from their customers. Uh, and each of us does something very different, but very important, right? Sure. We, and, all part and, of the pyramid. Yeah, we're all part of that pyramid. But um, what our customer, the senior living community, the activity director, right? That person who has to bring the engagement, you know, to the residents has right. the smallest budget. And hearing them say, oh, gee, I really, I need fitness because I'm a music person. I don't know how to teach the fitness. Um, but I really, you know, I would love to have Fotavia, but I can't afford both. You know, we're hearing things like that. I, I need this and I want this and I would like to get that, but I can't, I don't have the budget for everything, right? So it's never really, your product is better than your, the, those never seem to be the problems. It was always, you know, I, I just can't afford all the things that I need. So we just started to talk to each other, you know, and just say, well, this is silly because we're, we're, we're competing for the same dollars. We're not competing product wise, just for the same dollars that are very limited. Let's come together and see if we can't, um, you know, share in advertising costs and then bring our our costs down. We're all we're all lean companies. We don't have big board of directors or home offices that we need to support. We're all small companies. We can run pretty nimble. So we said, let's, you know, let's just bring that cost down and help these communities out, get our content to the people that really need it. It, it doesn't, Joe's got a wonderful library. I've got 170 exercise videos. I've got this, we've got wonderful libraries. They don't do anybody any good if we can't get it right. in front of the residents. So we're just, we just decided to become very aggressive with our pricing. It's so affordable and you get all six products. I mean, everything there in the palm of your hands. Um, to to help uh, residents live a more vibrant life. So, you know, it just made so much sense. And we, you know, we're excited about it. We're excited to get the news out. And, um, but it's not just for senior living communities either. We have the ability for home healthcare workers, for people aging in place. A lot of us are, have apps that are available. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Can, can I just touch on one thing real quick there, Lance, if you don't yeah, mind? Please. One of the things that Lori said is is so true, and, and for two reasons. The, the First of all, let's just touch on the aging in place market, okay? We ran a pilot um, with a well-known national company where they were saying, how do we get our caregivers to get more engaged? And how do we have a caregiver that's booked for four hours, not call us in an hour and a half, say, okay, I'm done with everything I need to do. Can I leave now? They're like, no, we need to need, be vested a here's a way to do it by engagement and b learn learn who you're providing care for so that part of the engagement is awesome but think about it from how does this work in a community-based setting you've got a life enrichment coordinator activities folks think that sort of nature you can legitimately plan out a month probably in 15 minutes so to the point where you can say all right with uh we're going to uh do a tour of peru then we're going to do chair yoga through like spiral. Then we're going to have questionnaires through Fotavia. Then we're going to do a, a speech. Oh, on what I mean, all of it. You can, you can have your days planned out, planned out. If somebody gets sick and can't come in, somebody else just steps in and literally hits play. Don't, you can forget, plan out. John, don't forget, John, we're going to listen to Peruvian music then <laughs> during, through coral. And then we're going to have a Peruvian. I was, I was getting dinner. there, Joe. I was getting there. Oh, what <laughs> would that be? Rice and beans? I don't even know. I think Peruvian <laughs> food is very good. Don't is it very good? Yeah. Peruvian yeah. food is very wow. good. Okay. Yeah. But but just, just to that point, I mean, people are looking for different ways to do things and spending all this time and money. I've spent so much time in communities and somebody will come in and say, well, we hired uh, so-and-so to come in here and do this for two hours for like 300 bucks for two yeah. hours for one day. Right. You can get these products for a fraction of that cost monthly, annually. The content is always changing. It's always shifting. And we are always making sure that we're staying at the forefront because as Lori mentioned, we are streamlined, we are agile, and we are very nimble. And between all of our companies across the country, we are always figuring out new ways to reach out and get somebody's attention. Yeah. You know, yeah. it, it's just, you, you can plan out a year's worth of uh, activities. Anybody can run it. That's the beauty of it, you know? Absolutely. And I could see this and I don't and I apologize if you guys mentioned it, but I hadn't heard or at least I don't recall hearing anyone mention senior centers. Absolutely. Yeah, senior senior centers are great, too. You can do that. Um, we've done some work with like memory cafes and things yeah. like that as well. So, yeah, I mean, it's all part of the continuum of care. You say continuum of care and people automatically think senior living. 
right. the continuum of care starts at home, right? Starts at home. It starts mm -hmm. at the senior centers. It starts in those different areas. And quite frankly, it starts with, with the education. When you get the adult children going to look for the um, for their home for mom or dad, they don't know what they don't know. And they've right. done some research online, and that's just like mind blown yeah. if it's your first time doing it, you know? Right. So it, it, it's really about education you know, and engagement because everybody's got to be a part of this process. And, and the way we deliver this with Quilt, you could have a family that lives in California and the loved one living here in Wisconsin, per se, they can all interact and engage simultaneously, which is really amazing because then you, see, then you still have that circle of care and that family that's able to come in, be part of the experience with mom, dad, and uncle, neighbor, whatever, whoever that loved one is. But that kind of support, and especially going back to what Lori mentioned, God forbid anything like COVID would ever happen again, but it gives us an opportunity now to stay connected, to stay present, and to be part of that person's journey and lifestyle moving forward. That's tremendous. Well, we're big supporters of you guys. As you know, this is your second time on the show. We've only had a few people on two times, and hopefully we'll even have right. you guys back three times. But um, I want to just close with um, first, and whoever would like to answer this, it's fine. Uh, where would you like viewers and listeners to go to learn more about this? Lori. Yeah, theengagementbundle.com. Theengagementbundle.com. Yeah, T H E. Yeah. Theengagementbundle.com. Okay. Um, yeah, and you'll find us all there. Fatavia is there. Spyro 100 is there. All of us are there. All six of the companies that are part of the bundle can be purchased individually. But we just give a huge deep discount when you get us all together. And then we you know, put it all nicely in a single sign-on app through Quilt. So it's very easy to get at. And we'll have that um, in the show notes as well for the viewers and okay. listeners. And then my yeah. final my final question, and you guys can go in the order you'd like. Uh, I'd like each of you to just give one statement answer as to, and we've talked about this for a while now today, but kind of concisely say why you feel like uh, these programs are important to seniors and their loved ones. I'll, I'll start off with that. And I, I just think it's it's one of those things where a lot of people that get into our industry get into it because they have a reason. Oh, my mom dealt with this. My dad dealt with this. My grandma dealt with this. So this is content and product for seniors by seniors. We've all seen how they've interacted, responded, and actually grown from it. So we've done live demos. We've worked with folks and, and the proof is in the pudding. I mean, I love the live demos that we go in and do because quite frankly, you get to see how people react. You know, we've got some great recordings of these, but you can talk about it all day. When you see it in action, it's truly incredible. And I think everybody in in this engagement bottle, that's, that's the reason why we do what we do because not only do we love and believe in it, but we also see how people respond to it. And Lance, let me put in the word attraction. So many caregivers yeah. are taught to redirect when someone is either depressed or they just need to get that uh, spark. When someone is alive inside because they have been attracted, it's a totally different brain effort. And if we can sustain that with these elegant six bundle projects and have a variety that's going to ripple. And John a moment ago said if someone loved one is across the country, they could watch the V clip that mom just watched and talk about that in that shared experience. They could look at the yoga class. All of these trips to Peru can be shared. So it's attract people and let them thrive because this is a brain exercise waiting to be tested. Wonderful. Lori? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I think the way I look at at it um, is what what would I want? What do I want my mom to have? I mean, the the greatest generation is is almost gone, and they were the, they were also I think the silent generation, right? What was acceptable uh, is not I got not going to work for the boomers. I mean, I'm I'm around the corner. I mean, we I'm the activities and you know some of the. The, the childlike games and things that are being uh, used are, aren't going to fly. You right. know, we're used to having music in the palm of our hands. We're used to having whatever we want to watch on television. I mean, uh, the senior living has to 
Adapt. Step up. Yeah, they have to step up. And it's what what, what our loved ones deserve. It's what we're going to want when we get there. It's we're going to want intelligent, um, impactful, and meaningful engagement. And technology now is has caught up to where it can it it can bring can bring that in. And it is all about keeping somebody well. It's like it's about touching on all those things that are very important to keep somebody healthy and well and aging vibrantly. You, when somebody moves into a senior living community, they ask themselves, am I going to be better off if I move in there or am I better off staying at home, right? So uh, that senior living community has got to has got to show how they're better, you know, how their life is going to be better, how they're going to keep them healthier, how they're going to keep them more vibrant, you know, right? Um, right. And and um, I think the, the bundle solution is can isn't part of that uh Part of that answer, part of that solution. Terrific. And finally, Joe. Yeah, yeah. Finally, yeah. We got the Joe. Yeah. Well, I, I'll. You know, I am so uh, proud again of this group here, and honestly, the last three or four years. Um, you know, as Lori mentioned, I've been trying to meet as many folks on LinkedIn like you, Lance. Like, and and I had talked to all these bundle, our bundle buddies prior to forming this uh, uh this summer and um frankly i was trying to sell them some of our stuff i was trying to partner with them we've developed some content for some of the members specifically and uh i was thrilled when we were finally asked and vetted through the process and uh, i mean spoiler alert the bundle may grow we'll see what happens <laughs> but I think I, I just want to go back to specifically what Fotavia is, but it's really the whole group. And Lori touched on it too. We are not a babysitting tool. Right. We are not something you turn on. We're not the price is right or the wheel of fortune. God bless those shows, but we're not that we're not loud. We're not what we want people talking over us. We're not like normal movies. You know, we, we want them to get engaged and say, Oh, I remember that photo. And, and now tell me the story why, and then I'll tell you why I remember it. And and that's what we want to see between caregivers and carees, um, I guess. So originally our stuff was designed, as John mentioned, for five to one hundred and five. It's where it's not demeaning. It's it's really it's meant for everybody. So and you asked earlier, Lance. We started in hospitality, but to me, they're parallel markets. Right. Senior caregiving. It's, it's hospitality. We're taking care of each, take care of each other and do what you would want to be done to you, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it, I'm going to add too is that, um, I mean, this is a tool. The caregivers are leaving. Direct caregivers are leaving the industry in droves. You know, I mean, it's just it's a tough it's it's tough it's a tough job, right? Yeah, and especially tough without tools, right? right? It's like asking a carpenter to build your house without a hammer. You know, they, a lot of times these activity people are thrown in there and they're given, like I said, the smallest budget mm -hmm. and then figure it out. And a lot of them end up going to the dollar store or to the library, trying to find things to create engagement, meaningful engagement. It's 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 strong. I mean, it's, it's just it's it should be one of the highest, yeah. uh, highest budgets Absolutely. after food. <laughs> Absolutely. You're right. And, and and some of the people are skewing younger. I mean, I met somebody right out of high school the other day. She's brilliant. But, you know, I can't imagine coming out of high school, not having any tools, not knowing the industry and just, I mean, loving people. Great. Yeah. Taking care of them is one thing. And but thinking, how am I going to reach these people? Yeah. All of the best intentions in the world. But how can I reach, yeah, reach these people? It. You know, yeah. so it's yeah. right there. So we hope that someday that, you know, uh, again, the bundle grows, we can get into everybody or get to meet everybody. I try and spread the good news about us and the bundle. And thank you, Lance, for inviting us to do that. Yeah, thanks, Lance. Lance is huge. Absolutely. And hopefully someday we can uh, be the bundle channel and be accessible <laughs> and we go. can show your show on the channel as well. That would be wonderful. I just want to go back to the bundle website. Is it yeah. theengagementbundle.com or engagementbundle.com? Because I want to put that up on the either screen. Way. Either you way. You can get there okay. either way. Okay, because we want to have that up on the screen as well in the show notes. But uh, I just want to say thank you to all four of you for your time and just the tremendous passion and creativity that you know, you're know you bringing to the industry that's so desperately needed. 
Yeah. And anytime we can be of help or support, just reach out and let us know. Thanks, Lance. It's always Thanks, good Lance. to see you. Thank Happy you New Year. Year. Happy always New Year to you guys. Happy yeah. New Year to everybody. All right. Have a great day. Thank you. you too. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us today here at All Home Care Matters. All Home Care Matters is here to help families as they navigate these long-term care issues. We invite you to visit us at allhomecarematters.com where there's a private, secure, fillable form where you can give us feedback, show ideas, or if you have questions. Every form is read and responded to. And remember, you can listen to the show on any of your favorite podcast streaming platforms or watch the show on our official YouTube channel. Just make sure to hit that subscribe button so that you never miss an episode. We'd also like to say thank you again to the gentleman from Fotavia, along with Lori Snow for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you next time here at All Home Care Matters. Thank you for joining us today. We look forward to you joining us again on another episode of All Home Care Matters. To learn more about the show and to connect with us, visit us at allhomecarematters.com.